Hello YouTube and today I'm going to show you how to make a simple house in Autodesk Maya. So to get started let's create a cube. I have a custom bar here but uh, if you don't have that just go to create polygon cube or you go to polygons and the cube there. If you have to draw yours out then Turn off interactive creation here, and then you should just get a cube that's created in your scene. Mine's really small because I've changed my scale of parameters, so I'm just going to scale mine up. That hit R, hold left click, and drag from the middle box, and that'll scale it up. So we've got this grid here, but I prefer mine to be on top of the grid so to do that I'm just going to create a plane so create polygon plane I'm going to hit R and scale that out too so this is on the grid now to get our cube onto the grid I go to turn on snapping so this one up here if you don't have that click on this and you should get a list here so hit this one here hold D and drag the pointer down until it's on the bottom of the cube and then let go of D. That's just changing the pivot of our cube and this magnet here is snapping to the vertices and faces. So now with D not selected you just want to pull the cube up and it'll snap on top of our grid. So now just delete the plane if you want or you can leave it there, it's up to you. So now I'm going to create the shape of this house, so I'm just going to scale it along this way. Maybe scale it down a bit. This is just hitting R and then using the different handles to scale it. So next we're going to create the roof. To do this I'm going to go to face mode. So what you want to do with your object selected, hold right click and go to face and then let go of right click. Now you're in face selection mode. So select the top face and we're going to extrude this. So hold control and then hit E and let go. Now you've got the extrude. What we're going to do is turn off snap mode from what we had on previously and then just move this extrude handle up a bit. About there. So now hit R and we're going to scale it in this way. So now we've got a roof like this. I'm going to leave a little overhang just for that effect. But if you want to, just scale it in really far. Or you could hold left click, go to vertex, move to the side and drag select the vertices. So you've got these four selected. And then go to edit mesh, merge to center. Oh, sorry, you want to select one side first, merge to center, then the next one, and merge to center. To repeat that action, you just hit G on your keyboard, and then you've got one line going through the center. But I'm going to Ctrl Z undo that, because I want this beam going along here. So again, with object selected, hold right click, go to face, select left click the face, hold shift left click the other two and hit Control E. Now we're going to pull this handle up a bit. This will define the thickness of our roof. Now you just hit W to go back to the boot tool. Now I'm going to select all around these edges so you just select one, hold shift and then double click the next one and it'll select all the edges around. Then hit Ctrl E and extrude that out so you've got your overhang. As you can see, because I've left this B bit, we have an overhang here that's looking strange, and here. You can leave that in if you want, if you think it gives a cool effect, but I'm going to just select both the faces by holding Shift and clicking on them and moving them in until it's about the same as the rest. Now back to object mode, select our object, 
Here's our roof. So now it's time to add the door. So to do this, we're going to go to Edit Mesh. Sorry, Mesh Tools. Insert Edge Loop. And over here, you've got your tool settings. If you don't have that, you want to go to Go to display UI elements and then you want to go to tool settings and make sure this is clicked on. And then you should get a should get a tool settings window and it'll look a bit like this. What you want to do, just drag it to this side over here and let go. And then it's snapped in here. So I'm gonna use multiple edge loops. This will make it so they are even with the part and I'm going to have two because the door's got one side and then the other side. So just left click with this tool on to one of the lines at the bottom and then there you go, you've got your lines. Uh, you might get some strange results or it might not work if you don't have fixed parts and auto complete on so just bear that in mind. Now we're going to hit R for scale and we're going to scale these closer together. If yours is not scaling because you've got it deselected, you just want to hold right click, go to edge mode, just like the other ones, and then you can use the same trick again, just click one line and then hold shift, double click the next and it'll select the whole strip. Do the same for the others. And then you scale it in. So now we've got that, we want to define the top of the door. So we're going to just use the same tool again, Mesh Tools, and Insert Edge Loop. This time we're going to use Relative Distance from Edge. And just move it up. Have our door about there. So now, I'm going to extrude the door in so we've got a little bit of a little bit of a gap. So just go hold right click, face, left click on the door, Control A to extrude, and move the blue handle in. And there we go. Back to object mode, right click object mode. Next, we're going to quickly do the windows. So again, mesh tools, insert edge loop tool. Make sure it's on relative distance from edge. Hold left click on one of the lines on the side of the building and move it down to where you want the bottom of the window to be. About there. And then to get the sides of the windows, I'm just going to use the multi edge loop tool again. So we've got two of them, and then let's click on this side, and then we get two on this side in equal lengths from this edge and this edge. And then hit R to scale it in a bit. But I'm actually I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm going to hit W and move it closer to our door. I'm going to do the same on the other side. But first let's go to face mode. Right click face. Left click our face. Here for our window. Hit Control E. But this time we're not going to move the handle, we're going to hit R for scale. And then this little handle here, we'll do this axis and this axis. So we'll scale that in. And we get a little border like this. And then we're going to hit Ctrl E again and pull the blue handle in. But with this, with these, we're going to click one, hold shift, double click the next one. And then Ctrl E and pull this out. So we've got a little border on our window. Right, going to quickly do the same for the other side. Mesh tool, insert edge loop tool. With the two selected, have to W. Move it over, close to our door. Face, Control E for extrude. R for scale. Move it in a bit. And then Control E again. Move it in. Select one face, shift double click the next one, control A and move it out for our little accent. And 
and I will go for her, our windows and our door. So now we can just add some other features. So let's add a chimney. So create a cube. This cube will create inside the house. So I'm just going to scale it up a bit and move it up. So now let's see it. I'm just going to scale it more appropriately with the scale tool. Just scale it from the center. Move it up a bit more. Hit R for scale and scale it in the Y. Got our chimney there. Let's offset it from the center a bit. Now I'm going to go to face mode. Hold right click face. Left click the top face. Control A to extrude up. Extrude it up a bit. Click this face here. Shift the next face, double click to get the loop all the way around, Control A and then extrude it out. Now we've got a bit of an overhang here. So I'm going to left click the top face, hit R and then scale it on this axis a bit, Control A and scale it in, extrude it in, sorry. Then we've got our chimney. Now we could add, if you want, a little overhang passage area. So I'm just going to create a cube. R to scale it up. W, move it along. Position it at the top of our door. Scale it on the Y axis. Scale it on the X and it, and on the Z. And just keep positioning it to where you want it. Right, now you've got it roughly where you want it. Hit E to rotate. And then we'll want to rotate on this axis. So make sure the line's highlighted and not the whole thing. So off your mouse over the line, hold left click and just drag a bit. About there. And then I'm just going to move this down and scale it a bit. Your scale might be still in the world position, so in your tool settings, just go to axis orientation and click object instead of world. And then you scale it with the rotation of the object itself. Same for the other tools, like the move tool. So now we've got the rough shape and position. I'm going to create a cylinder. So create polygon cylinder. Scale it up. Move it along. I'm going to scale it down more. I'm going to do the same thing we did for the house. So add the vertex snapping on. Hold D. Move it down. Let go of D. Now move our object up. Now the pivot on the bottom. And we can scale it from there. So turn the snap it off again. Move it in position. Just scale it down a bit. Now we're going to scale it up on the Y axis. And move it to where I want it. So let's scale this more this way. Move there. And hit Ctrl D to duplicate and move it onto the other side. Now we've got little support beams for our overhang. And that's pretty much our basic house. That concludes for this tutorial. Also, a quick thing to show you. If you want to change the colours of certain areas, so I might just change the windows to white so you can see them better. Hold right click with the house selected, go to face, left click each face while holding shift. Hold right click and you go down to assign favourite material and then use a lamp. This is the standard shader. So you go all the way along by clicking this arrow, or you can right click the arrow and go to Lambent 2. And then you double click the colour, 
and then you can select the color you want for the window. Both right click and go back to object mode and you can see the color is applied. So you do the same for the chimney, so both right click with it selected in object mode, assign favorite material, lambert, and then let's just change this to like a red color. And now we could do face and select all around here these borders that we've created. So I'm just left clicking in face mode and shift double click in the next face to get the loop all the way around. Now I'm holding right click, assign favorite material, Lambert, and I'm just going to add a dark gray, a gray texture to that. And there you go, there's your simple house. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful and get creative. Thank you.